I want to introduce uh, my second guest here. Uh, Scott Humphreys uh, began his real estate career at the Coral Banker banker residential south tampa office in 2008 and his leadership skills quickly gained him entry into branch office management he was an all-american on stanford university's undefeated tennis team which won the ncaa championship in 1995 and he's played professional tennis for 10 years competing at wimbledon the u.s open the australian open french open and winning three doubles titles on the atp tour he understands the importance of setting goals and working together to achieve them his background gives him a unique per- perspective on how he motivates his associates and help them achieve greatness. Scott, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jamie. Looking forward to being here. Thanks. Scott, your background in tennis is very impressive. Explain to the audience how you've transferred that work ethic you know, into your real estate practice. Sure. I, I think in any, any uh, level of, of things that you do, you've got to work hard to achieve your goals. You know, it's important to set goals, but, uh, but also you know, nothing comes easy. You've got to put the hard work and the time in and... And I think I was able to transfer that from the tennis court into, into coaching and then uh, also in, into real estate when, when I was listing and selling and then also into, into coaching the agents that, uh, that I work with. And you came into real estate with no experience back in, when was it, 2008 roughly, 2009? When was it? Had, the, had some family uh, history in real estate out in California, but yeah, I came in cold from, uh, from traveling the world and, and got started in the South Tampa office. That's interesting. You know, who were some of the tennis greats that you competed against or played alongside? Uh, Pete Sampras, Andre Agassi, Jim Courier, uh, Jennifer Capriati, local local name as well. Um, to uh, you know, some of the youngster or younger people, I should say, Roger Federer. Um, so kind of all all over the the map there, but uh, a, a good group of guys, and and some are local as well. So I, I practiced a bunch with some of those guys. Interesting. What was it like to play at Wimbledon? I mean, did you ever imagine as a youth playing tennis, you would one day play on the grandest stage of them all in tennis? I think that was always kind of my dream. I'd wake up early to watch breakfast at Wimbledon when those guys, when Ed Berg and the Couriers were playing in the finals. So that was that was always the dream. And then to be able to play there, Center Court Wimbledon in 2004 when, when I retired was, uh, was a special feeling. Interesting. That's very impressive. Why did you leave the sport and how do you stay involved in the game today? Left, uh, when I stopped playing, I went into coaching, had an opportunity to, to work with Marty Fish, a local guy that was top 10 in the world. Uh, worked with him for several years, some of the, the young up-and-coming Americans, um, and then uh, worked with, with some of the female players. And uh, just, I'd been traveling internationally since I was about 14, and, and uh, that does uh, get old a little bit. So I was eager to get into the real estate uh, business and, and start kind of the next phase of, of uh, my career. Now, are you coaching today? Are you mentoring young professionals or no? I'll, I'll do a little bit locally, um, but just don't have the time with, with managing Coldwell Banker office and, and uh, a family, so it's tough. I, do, I, I still do some pro-ams here and there locally, uh, some tournaments um, if, they're, if they work into my schedule, but uh, not too much into the tennis world anymore. Interesting. Now, you're a branch manager with the uh, Coldwell Banker you know, brokerage, you know, of which I'm with as well. You know, and Coal Bank agents are, you know, currently representing more $1 million plus listings in the area with 116 listings with, you know, the second best competitor behind us at 73. You know, and year to date, you know, Coal Bankers sold $23 million plus homes, you know, whereas our second place contributor is in at only 12. Let's talk a little bit about the advantages that Coldwell Banker offers sellers in this segment of the marketplace. Well, our, our previews brand, which is our million dollar and up properties, uh, you know, we have several marketing um, uh, instruments that we use in those million dollar plus properties as, as well as being able to market uh, properties online like no other company can uh, from our over 700 websites to our luxury magazines uh, to just the you know, the the range of, of, of the Coldwell Banker name and where it goes. Um, yeah. You know, I think, uh, you know, an importance of, you know, uh, you know, at least before I even got into real estate, I always understood the importance in real estate of a brand name that had national recognition. I know real estate is local, but, you know, when you're getting into the million dollar plus category, you've got to have national and international brand name recognition. And people don't want to deal with or don't trust sometimes the smaller brokerages because, you know, they, they don't have, you know, that reputation, you know, built up. So it's important, you know, to have a strong brand name that has international you know recognition. And that's something that Coal Banker, you know, office offers, you know, plus we have. 16 branch office locations as well, you know, so there's a lot of Coldwell Banker agents here in the area. And you mentioned, you know, we have over 700 websites, you know, that we market our properties on. And, and I always say, don't be fooled by other, you know, brokerages that claim to be marketing on tens of thousands, because all they're doing is they're claiming every agent's, you know, personal website as a, as a, you know, real estate website that they're averaging, or I mean, that they're marketing on. And the average realtor's website gets zero traffic. So, I mean, we're on 725 websites, and we're getting great exposure for all our properties. Would you not say? I would. You know, within 24 hours of listing our properties, they're they're global. Um, uh, uh, we're seeing more and more international buyers right now, and that's why we're continually growing 
where our brand is. Right now, we're in over 51 countries, and uh, you know, most of those, uh, most of the people that come into our country do know the Coldwell Banker brand. So, brand is a huge thing, and, and plenty of the new licensees that I interview, um, you know, know the brand but don't know much about what we have to offer, and that really is, uh, you know, a, a job of mine to to make sure that they understand the value of, of what Coldwell Banker can offer their real estate career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Scott, how many do you know? How many uh, offices we have overseas now? We have fifty. We're in fifty-one different countries. Okay, um, and, and I know you're in France. So I'm yes. happy about that. Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. A big market of ours. That yeah. European market, we're seeing a, a lot of uh, UK buyers come mm -hmm. in, uh, a lot from, from France, but South America as well. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a market you know, that we're continually looking to, to grow in. And I know our Florida president, Clark Tool, is that's a priority for his as well, mm -hmm. for him as well. Right. Very good stuff. I've got to take a quick sponsor break, but if you're just tuning in, you've been listening to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Winds, WH&Z. Please stay tuned. We're going to finish up the show with a little bit more from Scott and a little bit of an update on the uh, Tampa Bay real estate marketplace. Hi again, everybody, and thanks for staying tuned in to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Winds, WHNZ. And again, you'll find my show on every Mondays at noon, so please tune in as my show aims to become your information source for the Tampa Bay real estate market. Scott, I remember you coming into our office as a new agent, and now you're a branch manager over you know, many new as well as experienced you know, agents as you once were. You know, how did Coal Banker develop you as a dominating agent in the marketplace, and what tools did it offer you to aid in your development? Sure. Yeah, I think the main thing there is leadership. You know, we're we're led by a a great group of people that uh, gives us the tools, gives us the the instruments to be successful. Um, you know, the leads certainly coming into the company are great, but you know, we're not a discount brokerage. Uh, the tools are there for our agents to use and, and to give our clients top notch service. So, um, you know, it certainly stems from the opportunities that the agents create. But when we do create those that you know, when we're discussing the value of a company, I think that if we're able to do that effectively, our clients see what, what we can do to offer them to sell their house at the highest possible price. And Coal Banker offers all its agents, you know, a, a, I think it's one or two week training session. They really take an agent through the process, whereas a lot of agents will walk into a brokerage with no experience. And I always tell people in the community, just because somebody has a real estate license does not mean that they have the knowledge. The Florida State Real Estate Licensing course does not prepare a, a person for real estate sales. They, they leave that responsibility up to the brokerages, and some of the brokerages do not take upon that responsibility, would you not say? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you, getting your real estate license, you have the ability to sell real estate, but not necessarily the know-how. Uh, our Coldwell Banker University takes a new agent in and really gives them the know-how, the tools, the understanding of the, the business and how they can build their business to be successful from the first week in the business. So yeah. uh, an important tool that we offer. Yeah, absolutely. I can remember when I got my you know license back in, in 2006 and I got done with the course and got my license, I had no idea what to do. I was <laughs> like, what do I do? You know, I was scared to death to show home. They started talking about making an offer. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you go through and you get your license and you, you come to the office every day. But yeah, you, there's not really that know-how on, on how I'm going to go create business for myself. Yeah. So that's really where our education and, and uh, the coaching that we provide those new agents takes over. Absolutely. Why is it the, Why do you feel that so many realtors fail in this business and bounce around from office to office? You know, I mean, you see that so much, you know, that real estate people, you know, just, just never get a foothold in the business. And as, since you're mentoring so many agents, where, where are they going wrong? Yeah, I, I think in the setup of their business, uh, you know, in any business, you do need to invest in your business. Um, you know, you need to uh, look at what's going to bring you business. You, you, it's a networking business that you need to make sure that you are networking with clients, uh, with customers, with your sphere of influence. So it's, you know, why they're failing, tough to set, tough to put one specific thing on it. But, uh, you know, when, when you come to Coldwell Banker and see the value that we offer our agents and what we provide them, with to be successful, there really is no other place. Absolutely. And then, you know, as a branch manager, part of your job, you know, mentoring these new agents and everything, you know, explain to me where, you know, most of the agents that you mentor are strong and where do you think they're, they're weak mostly? I think you, you get people that come into the business, they're fired up to get going. Uh, they're excited about the business. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's, let's get a listing. Let's write an offer. But, uh, you know, it really comes down to, to the coaching, mentoring that you mentioned to make sure that they're on the right path. You know, they join an office to be held accountable to get their business up and going. Um, and we as, as managers, they need to hold us accountable to keep them on the right path as well. So a, a lot of things that new agents can do, um, but there's certainly smart things to do and not so smart things to do. And we, we try to make sure they're doing the right things. I've always thought, you know, a lot of agents go wrong where they don't, they don't develop a proper infrastructure and they really don't understand that, 
when they become a licensee, they become an independent contractor of a brokerage and they have opened a business they need to incorporate and then they need to start, you know, paying themselves through a payroll service and then, and, you know, work in their sphere of influence. And this is true in any real sales of business, I would say, but especially in, in, in real estate because it, it is your own business, you know, and so many people just, I don't think, understand that to get a real estate license and you know, it's something that, you know, I mentor a lot of agents too, because I, I spend so much time and effort on my own infrastructure and it's, it's obviously, you know, helped me through the years, but so many people just don't build that infrastructure at, at the onset of it and, and, and develop, you know, that networking, you know, sphere that they need to. Would you not agree? Yeah. You know, I mean, in getting started in the business, it's, it's tough to know those types of things. And I don't think you're necessarily busy enough to, to have that as a top priority, but to be where you are and as, as many units and sales that you do is probably a very smart thing. And I'm sure you consulted with some, some attorneys or legal people that directed you down that, the right path, what was right for you. But, uh, you know, our, our, our goal in bringing people in is to make sure that they're on the right path to be successful. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and we want them to, to stay in the business, stay with Coldwell Banker and, and uh, you know, build a successful career. Very good. Well, Scott, thank you very much, uh, you know, for coming on the show. A lot of great information and uh, definitely uh, some good information there on your tennis career. Very, uh, very interesting to know somebody that played at Wimbledon, so I will say that. So thank you very much, you know, for coming on the show. You and I do, uh, do a lot of business together and we'll be doing a lot more, you know, coming up, you know, here in the years. So thank you very much. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, Jamie.